Hello, my name is Cesar, and in this video I would like to address a question I get a lot about my system. I've done a few video series uh, on YouTube developing a, a DigiPy, it's a de uh, dependency graph on Python, and I think there's another called Naming, and there may be another like random videos there. And yeah, I get the question a lot, like what's, what Linux are you using, and what, you know, IDE and that kind of stuff. So let's get that out of the way. So I use Linux. Uh, uh, in my case, this is uh, is Antergos. That's the distribution. Is Archbase. Um, the cool thing about uh, Antergos is that it doesn't get in the way in between you know the distribution and straight Arch. So it's basically well the way I look at it. It's basically uh, an, an easy way to install an Arch system with some, you know, same defaults, but after the install, it's straight Arch. Uh, there's no layer going on. It. There's nothing special. Uh, there are other like uh, Arch-based distribution like Manjaro that they have like their own layer in between. This is like a straight Arch, and and I like that. And um, what else? The desktop environment uh, is GNOME 3.24, I think, the latest. Uh, so yeah, that's Linux. Uh, works for me. It's all right. Uh, the 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 edit the development side, like uh, the text editor, the IDE. I use a text editor. I use Beam in the terminal. Beam is kind of old school and kind of clunky in a way, but I love it. it. It works great for me. I've used, of course, other software before, but Beam, I don't know, it just worked for me. That's the truth. <laughs> so, yeah, Beam is, is uh, cross-platform again, open source. It comes, uh, uh, it's probably installed on every, by default, on every Linux distribution. And you already have it. Uh, and if it's not, it's usually super easy to get installed. The same goes to Mac and, and Windows. It's like super straightforward. Uh, I actually use NeoBeam, which is a fork, and there, there's some things there, but let's say it's just Beam for the for the for this video. It's it's alright. So yeah, Beam it's it's very different from any other text editor, and there are good reasons for it. There's plenty of tutorials and you know people talking about it. Talks, really good talks on YouTube. It's super interesting. But yeah, I don't want to do a tutorial uh, because you know people might not be interested. In. But I would like to go through like some very basic things in case you want to you know you know you open it just to see how it is and it it looks crazy. <laughs> so the first thing and this is kind of a joke, but it, it, you know, it's how to close Beam because it's so weird, so different. So it, it already tells you here. So press colon Q enter. So colon will put you in the command line. So you're here now and you can run commands. And Q or quit is the command to quit. You can also do exit. So if I do colon Q enter, I'm out, right? So Beam, I go in, colon Q, I'm out. Uh, it's so fast. I love it. <laughs> so that's one thing. The next thing, uh, if you want to start doing something and you see that it's so different, uh, there's a tutorial built in. Uh, so if you're in NeoVim, you can do column tutor, like that, where well, I hope you can see it in the command line at the button, and that will open the Beam tutor, the tutorial. And this tutorial have this kind of little arrows here with these little marks. Uh, so if I search for the next one, uh, so you can see like a step by step how to do different things. And once you complete that, so let me complete this one. Uh, you will see the mark uh, changes. I don't know what you're thinking, like this is so basic, like I'm just deleting characters or completing words, but trust me, you will need this <laughs> because it, it is very different. 
it's not just type in and you're you're ready to go. Uh, but again, there are really good reasons for that. And the, yeah, maybe at the beginning it's a little bit hard, but it, it, there's there's a lot going on. So okay, moving on. <laughs> so that's the tutorial. The other really 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 cool thing is the help system. Uh, so if you do it, it's also also there. I think here. So if you do colon help, that's another command. So you can start seeing the pattern here. Uh, this is the the help system. So I know it uh, it it looks weird. Uh, it's just like a text file. Actually, you can see the help.txt. Uh, but it's it's really good. It's one of the most comprehensive helps uh, manuals, reference manuals that I ever seen in any software, and I've used. A lot of it so uh, I use this all the time I use this a lot uh, you can jump within things uh, control bracket just like the tags well it's kind of a common thing on being the way you you jump between files so you can see you can jump I can go back and yeah it, it has some chapters um, and all the help you will need uh, actually if you if you install like some plugins or not uh, the common pattern is try to integrate that help here so you can see like local additions that those are plugins I've installed on my own they, they add their own documentation and I can jump uh, jump to that and you know whatever oops sorry clunky and now in that documentation right so yeah really good it's it's really really good done you know done, done don't think it's it's crap and go directly to Google. This is this the thing. This is really really good. Uh, so other than that, okay. So other than that, uh, so Beam, uh, it's weird, but also the default doesn't help. <laughs> they're kind of ugly. Not as much on Neo Beam, but straight Beam, they are they are ugly. So I think I can. Uh, I think I can open Beam without any user like that. Yeah, so this is this is the default for NeoBeam, which is alright, but it's still not great for development. Maybe it's it's okay to you know open one file, edit one line, and that's it. Uh, so uh, how to configure this? Because fortunately, uh, you can do a lot in the configuration. So as many Linux software, there's a dot file for it, like some file, some text file in your system that hold this configuration. In the case of NeoVim is, well, I'm in my home directory. So it's, uh, if I open the file in dot config and NeoVim, and then in it, that's the config. It's an, uh, a startup script, it's basically a Beam script. And here it specify like a bunch of commands that I can actually run those commands in the command line. So we'll start from top to bottom, running all this stuff. And well, at the end, you know, it give you the control back to you and you can start using it. So you can see things like, I don't know, the first block here is a plugin manager. So you, there are many alternatives. I like this one. It's called plug. Uh, so it has a few features. Well, look for it. I think it's great. Uh, so I can specify like GitHub repos here, and it will do the update or clone the repo, put everything in the right place, even build the thing if it's you know compile and whatnot. It also loads plugins uh, lazily, so you you don't need to load everything. You know, if this is C plus plus, will only be loaded when when I open a C plus plus file. Uh, Python, GL, Cell, whatever. And then I have all the commands uh, that configure those plugins and other like more miscellaneous things. So for example, syntax enable. So that's the syntax highlighting. Uh, I said the color scheme. I said, I don't know, I want to see numbers at the side, relative numbers. Uh, no grab a, a, a bunch of things right so if you go to github for example and you look for dot files 
people used to share these things. So you will probably find a lot to to steal from, <laughs> and 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 you will be able to configure BIM to something more reasonable for you. The other good thing is the whole configuration is just one file, and all these plugins and all this stuff it's just cloning from GitHub or something. So if you need to move to a different machine or if you SSH a lot into different you know servers and whatnot, you need to move one file. <laughs> so that's that's great about it. It's super portable. And all this work on cross platform, so you can use the same thing mostly on different operating systems. It it's great. It's great. Uh, okay, that's configuration. Uh, I don't want to go too long about this, but maybe we can talk a little bit about projects because that's something that it's not usually covered in many tutorials and whatnot. So yeah, let's give it a try. So let me go to uh, a directory, a project with uh, a few files. So this is my website, the, well, the sources of my website. Uh, we have, well, you can see it there. It's not huge, but there's a, a few files. So the way I deal with uh, projects like this, I use them at, at home, at work, at, at, with way bigger projects than this. Uh, it's, I just open BIM on the directory and then you have a few options. If you want to open a file, uh, no, the, the vanilla way is just do column E or edit and then type the file path, right? So it's, it's relative, it can be a, a absolute or relative to the project. But that like source, uh, uh, maybe content or theme or whatever, right? But that's like super slow. So the other thing you can do, uh, it's open like this uh, explorer and do like the the tree thingy and go oh, so uh, content and I want to open let's say that one, uh, yeah, and that will open that file. But that's so so slow. <laughs> so what the, what they do? Uh, and, I, and and many IDEs have this stuff too. I have a plugin that does the fuzzy searching thingy on the project. So I just let's say I want to open a, a file about an article about Lego, and I know my articles are Markdown, so Lego MD, and there you go. I'm searching for that, and when I click enter, I have the file open. So that's super handy to move between files and big projects. You can also jump, go to definition and all that stuff, right? But uh, just to get the stuff in the screen, I think that that's great. That works great for me. Uh, what about multiple files at the same time? So I guess you notice when I open this, the previous file, it's gonna disappear. Uh, so it's gonna, it get closed and then it can only handle one file at the time, but that's not true. Uh, so if I do colon ls, you know, list like like in the terminal, uh, bash or whatnot, uh, you can see that I have two things going in there. Those are called buffers. So a buffer in Beam is a representation of the file in memory, and there's a interesting decoupling between the view, which is the thing. Uh, the window that you can see actually edit the file and the buffer right so let's say I do a vertical split here so now I have the same buffer uh, in two in, in different windows right so let me do like move it this a little bit so if I start editing this here you can see how it's editing in, at both sides uh, it's the same instance and if I go to the other side and do well, let me see here. So I do like, uh, you can see how I, I'm editing that. So yeah, so there's there are buffers, right? So I can, each view I can cycle to the next buffer. I can open another buffer in the, in the view, right? It's, the view is just showing you the buffer, but the buffer is open always in memory. And it's kind of lightweight and it's, there are some properties there. So that's basically you can you start doing splits if you want, 
and you can put different buffers there. Uh, there are also tabs uh, that having this split between the view and the buffer allow you to have more interesting use cases for tabs. Uh, in most editors you have this one tab, one file kind of thing going. Uh, you, you can totally do that, but it's kind of pointless uh, in a way. Uh, especially if you can, you can do all these splits and all this stuff without involving tabs. So, uh, so let me create a tab. Uh, uh, like the way tabs are uh, in, intended to be used, it's more like you know virtual desktops, like more context aware kind of thing. So let's say if I open a few templates here from the project, so base. And let's say I want to open template index and let's do yeah vertical split. So now I have two tabs and each one have so let's say just to make it different uh, uh, so markdown whatever uh, yeah that one so and, and each one have a different layout you know this have a different number of panels I can also do can I, I cannot do that nice okay it doesn't matter but yeah each one a different layout they remember the layout but it's like you can use this per context right maybe I can open at the make file in a different tab uh, so that's how I use tabs so at work for example I usually have to deal with different projects at the same time let's say the back end and the front end so I usually have each project in a tab so when you do the fuzzy search you may do the fuzzy search in different projects from different repositories and different things right and it's very uh, easy to me to jump between them without you know no hassle it's just there everything's there everything is super quick it's in memory right there so that's uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. How I do it. Uh, I'm pretty sure you know this is the internet, so there there will be people you know suggesting other th ways to do it, and that's totally fine. <laughs> that's how how it works for me. And yeah, uh, so let me know if if you like if you're interested about this stuff. Maybe we can do more. We can do some tips or whatnot. So, but yeah, that will be for now. I hope you like it. And see you the next time. Bye-bye.